In this video, we will see how to validate nested objects, simple arrays and arrays of nested objects in NestJS using class validator. We also see how to transform data to the expected type using class transformer. What I have is a new NestJS project with just one endpoint. This route handler here, it takes a post request to slash locations endpoint. And here I want to capture the request body. I also have this create location DTO, which is a class where I want to apply the validation rules. Right now there are no validation rules in the create location DTO. If I go ahead and call this endpoint right now, by the way, what I'm doing is just to return whatever the DTO is, I'll just return it as a response. So if I call this endpoint right now, it just returns an empty object because we don't send any data yet. Now let's go to the create location DTO and apply some validation rules. I will start by demonstrating the class transformer thing. Uh, let's take for example, in this request, we want to have, let's call this magic number. Just something for demonstration. And this is going to be of type number. Number. Then I want to say that this is going to be of type integer whatever is int and is optional what i want to demonstrate is a case where if this magic number comes in as number string for something like this let's say it comes in like this especially for query params that are strings right that is where this is most useful let me send the request first so uh, I'll have magic number here and I'll send it as two. No problem. Everything works fine. But assuming this were to be query params, but let me just proceed with the body to demonstrate the same thing. So this will come in as a string and you can see it says that magic number must be an integer. What we can do in that case is to use class transformer to transform that type to a number and it goes like this we say a type and type is imported from class transformer and we just return the expected type now so it is a number here now if i send the same number string to the endpoint, you can see that it passes. Uh, the reason I demonstrated this is because we are going to use it for nested object validations. So I'll move on to the next validation rule here. And for this, I have this uh, other DTO, which I called location DTO. Here it has name and rank. But the main point here is that this is a different object that we want to validate inside another uh, object class but eventually they become object so this is location and it's going to be of type location DTO so how do we validate this object this nested object if we say is object that comes with certain limitations as we are going to see so I'll head over here and let me, of course, right now, location will be a required field. And if I put location, I can put anything that can be seen as object. For example, I can send, oh, not that. I can send an empty object. You can see that that passes, but that doesn't capture the field we have in location DTO, as you can see here. So to make this validation rule capture the fields we have in location DTO, what we need to do is to say validate nested. So we are telling this, um, 
we are just saying that this shouldn't just be um, an object but it has to be object that match the type for location detail now if i save this and we go back to to send the request you will notice that the the request tape passes so what is happening here what is happening is that although we say validate nested uh, fields the class validator doesn't know yet the properties so to speak the type for this location detail because you can call this whatever you like okay the fact that i just said um location detail here does not automatically make the class validator to understand what is going on you can call this a string you can call this a string and you get the same result so to make class validator validate what whatever that is inside the location detail we need to transform this type we say type we need to inform it of the type using the class transformer once again we say that the type is location detail now it knows that the thing it is validating is of this type so i will go back now and send the request you can see that the validation kicks in for the nested object it says that uh, the name location dot name must be string and location dot um, rank must be a number so let's add the name and i'll put uh, john doe here come on what am i doing whatever and the rank so for this rank is going to be a number let me put two here and send the request you can see that that passes if i put number string two here that is not going to pass because it is explicitly asking for a number i don't want to come here and transform it doesn't really make sense the previous one the first case here is just for demonstration purposes if you, if you are expecting a number you can just leave it as a number but if it is something like uh, the query string like i've mentioned before you might uh, transform that number string to actual number so this is for nested object the next thing we will look at is validating simple array just array of a primitive type like array of string or array of numbers so for this let me just have uh, tags whatever and this is going to be array yeah array like that of string and what how do we validate a simple array we can just say is array but that's not all let, let me go over here and send this request you can see that it says oh, why am i getting location here location dot rank oh yeah so i'll send the request it says tags must be an array so let's go ahead and send tags i will send empty array first and the validation passes but if i put a number here recall that we want tags to be array of strings you can see that that also passes it means that this validation rule is not enough to capture what we are expecting again the fact that this is called um, array of string does not apply that validation rule. if i call this number not in caps number and i go over here it works so what i want to do here is to say that each item in this simple array should be of type string and we say a string but this is not enough because what this rule is saying is that the field tags should be a string in fact if i send a request now because this string is kind of uh, conflicting with it, with is array 
if I send the request now, you can see that it's saying that tags must be a string. What we need to do is to say that each field should be a string. So we say each true, like that. Now I will go back and send the request one more time. You can say, say that each, each field in tags must be a string. So let me come over here and make this validation to pass. I'll say Java and Python, whatever. And I'll send the request again. You can see that that passes. Now let's take a look. I want to change this to like the long syntax there. The next thing I want to show you is how to validate array of nested objects. So it's going to be similar to what we have, just like a combination of object and arrays. So for this, I have this class attributes. So you can see that over here is going to be an object like this. We say attribute attributes of type attributes DTO. How do we validate this? Oh, by the way, it should be an array, not a single value. So this is going to be array of objects. First, we say that this is array. And like before, if I send this request, it's going to be required field. And let's go ahead and provide that required field with an empty array and the validation passes. However, if I come inside here and supply whatever I like, there will be no complaint because we did not say what type of, uh, what type for that attribute. I'll go ahead and add validation rule like we've seen before, validate nested for nested objects. And if I go back, it should tell that this the items here are supposed to be objects. And I'll send the request. It says must be object or array. This is seen the type of array as object. So, but there's a, a little problem here. If, if I send empty object, you can see that that passes. But we want the each item in the array to be of attributes DTO type, this type here. So what we need to do is once again to use the type transformation. We say that this is going to be attribute DTO type. And if I go back and send this request, you can see that the validation kicks in. There's only one um, error message there, validation error, because this one is optional. So let me go back and supply the value status and we say status equals anything here and send the request and by the way to just confirm that this is working as expected if you send any random value here that is not going to solve the problem for example if you say a is 2 that is not going to solve the problem so it is validating the nested object for each items in the array.